경의하는 김정은 동지께서 새로 개발한 반 땅크 유도 무기 시험 사격을 지도하신 소식을 여러 나라에서 보도했습니다. 중국의 신화통신은 시험 사격은 휴대용 레이저 유도 반 땅크 로켓의 비행 조종성 및 명중성과 로 송주항기관 일권들, 평양 시내 당 정권기관, 농업지도기관 일권들, 농업근로자들이 보고에 참가했습니다. 김성훈 용조자께서 시험 결과에 만족을 표시하셨다고 보도했습니다. Back in the old days, Toyota, Honda, and Nissan decided to get into the luxury car market, and that's how we have brands like Lexus, Acura, and Infiniti. Now the Koreans are getting to the act by creating the Genesis brand, which is what we see here. This is the 2017 Genesis G80. Notice I didn't say Hyundai Genesis G80 because Hyundai doesn't want you to know they make this car, even though you have to buy it at the Hyundai dealer. A. It's just the way it is. This is a nice looking machine, I think, especially the white paint because it's 110 degrees outside and this white paint reflects the heat quite well. All Genesis cars have this headless bird emblem, uh, which I've mentioned in my videos before. I'll show you why. We have a similar looking headless bird emblem on the Chrysler 300. Another one on the Aston Martin. Another one on the Mini Cooper. And the Bentley. This is a sharp looking car, but they really need to get a different emblem, I think. Just my opinion. If the Genesis name doesn't impress you, the $55,000 price tag might. That price includes a long list of standard equipment. Too extensive to list here, but you know, leather seats, air conditioned seats, super sound system, you get the idea. I did find it insulting to be charged an extra $100 for a cargo tray, an extra $45 for a first aid kit, and $55 for wheel locks. I mean, come on, guys. You're spending 55 grand for a car, shouldn't that be standard? I'm not going to pick on the factory. I mean, almost all manufacturers do this, but it's totally ridiculous. There you go, $55,700. There is a less expensive version of this with a V6 engine for around $45,000, and there's a super version called the G90 with more engine options, more luxury options, uh, around $75,000, I'm told. But those two vehicles are for a different video. Right now we're concentrating on this Genesis G80 V8. And here the V8 is. 5 liters, 420 horsepower. Hooked to an 8-speed automatic with a drive mode button, Eco, Normal, and Sport. Right there. Fuel economy, for those who care, is listed at 15 MPG in the city and 23 on the highway. I've been driving this for several days in the city, getting 15.5. And I was probably hitting the gas pedal a bit more than I should, so I think that's pretty good. We'll be doing some freeway driving later on in the test, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be around 22 to 23 MPG. This is one of the smoothest and quietest V8 engines I've ever driven. Performance-wise, it's a little sluggish, below 2,000 RPM, especially when getting away from a stoplight. But once the RPMs pick up, it moves out quite well. So far, I reached 0 to 60 in around 5.8 seconds, but I wasn't trying that hard. Yeah, now we're going. The brake pedal's a little soft, but the brake stopped just fine. Not only is the engine smooth, but the ride is smooth too. Very comfortable. I'm told the steering is electric, but it has a pretty good feel. For those of you who watch my videos, you know one of the first things I do is take the headlights out in the dark to see how they perform. So let's get to that right now. 
it's stark enough so let's take these headlights out and see what they do when we turn them back on here we have a wall 100 feet away and I have the lights on low beam a little low to the ground but enough light here are the brights great output here we have the brights on a building 300 feet away it illuminates quite well going down to low beam just reaches out but that's plenty enough overall the headlights are excellent and no complaints there's some additional lighting when you approach the car it detects the key and lights up the uh, Genesis emblem down here below so everybody in the parking lot will know you own a Genesis And yes, it does move with the vehicle. I showed this car to a business associate of mine, and he was telling me how ugly the interior was. And I said, what are you talking about? It's a beautiful interior. Oh, no, it's ugly because it's tan. It should be black. Are you kidding me? It's 100 degrees plus outside all week. I don't want a black interior. I'll roast alive. I like tan. That's the way I look at it anyway. A few months ago I complained because of fake wood in a car and I got a bunch of hate mail saying no the wood is real the wood is real you're an idiot well it's like this it's like breast implants you can't tell by looking and sometimes you can tell by feeling it feels like plastic to me but I looked on the window sticker and yes it's real wood the Koreans have been copying the Japanese and Germans on their interiors so Usually everything's the way it should be. We've got a nice gauge cluster with lots of useful information here. The uh, headless bird emblem, but aside from that, the steering wheel looks pretty good with excellent fingertip controls. There's one feature I can't stand on cars. It's that horrible radar cruise control where the car accelerates and brakes itself to keep a certain distance from the car in front of you. I'm not going to get into why I don't like this. I just think it's a bad idea. But on the Genesis, you have a choice. If you don't want to use the radar cruise control, you can press the button and get conventional cruise control. We just go at one speed, and that's what I like. So thank you, Genesis, for giving us the choice. A very simple to use climate control and stereo system. You also get a control knob, similar to what you see on the Audis. Slightly easier to use though. Get the home, phone, back, menu, map. On the positive side, the glove box is large enough to put a bunch of stuff in. However, that is only if you remove the thousand plus pages of owner's manuals we get that no one's going to read. All this stuff is going straight into the trunk as soon as this video gets turned off. I only had one real complaint with the interior, and it's the same complaint I have with a lot of Korean cars, and that is any time you turn the engine off, you get this stupid chime. I don't want to hear this. I can't turn it off. It's like when I was in Japan, every time you had a coin of any machine, you got these little tunes and voices that come out. I don't want to hear this, Hyundai. Get rid of it. I've been making lots of trips today, 50 stops. Had to listen to this. 50 times. Ugh. Chinese water torture. We've got three speed bumps here, so let's see what happens when we run over them at high speed. I heard some thumping, didn't feel anything. Pretty impressive. By the way, the thumping noises you heard, that wasn't the car, that was my tire repair kit bouncing around in the trunk. Not the axle falling off. Another speed bump. Another speed bump. This is a very smooth car. Let's take it on the turning circle and see if we can make the tire squeal. I set the pressures at 33 front, 35 in the rear, the way they're supposed to be. It 
Yeah, now we're getting a little squealing, but I'm going pretty quick too. Handling's pretty good for a luxury machine. We just drove from 2,000 feet to 7,000 feet elevation to visit my home away from home. 18.5 mpg. We'll see what we get on the trip down. I should take some of this firewood back with me in town. Let's see, I wonder if I could fit about 20 or 30 logs in that Genesis interior. I'm sure it wouldn't hurt the leather seats too much. Just kidding, Hyundai, I'm not going to do that. Welcome to Bear, Arizona, kiddies. Alaskan tundra walls. Keep the windows up because they can jump in the window. How about the sunroof? Here's another wolf. Come on, get my sandwich out of the cooler and go feed him. He won't bite you. It's too dark. It's not coming out in the picture. They're going to kick us out. You realize that? They're watching us. That'd be some nice steak. Wonder how much it costs to feed these guys. They are herbivores. These are the general noise of things. They're all listening to them. Oh, look at the little ones so cute. Huh. Reminds me of Hillary Clinton. But you're not supposed to cut. A change on the fuel consumption figures. We did some extra miles going uphill. 20.5. We'll be going the downhill section next. We're going from 7,000 to 2,000 feet. We'll be checking the fuel economy once we get into town. We just finished a 450 mile highway trip. Starting at 2,000 feet elevation, climbing up to 7,000 feet elevation, doing some errands and coming back down again, and the mileage was 23 miles per gallon. Exactly what it says on the window sticker. I drove this car for about a week, putting on 500 miles on it, and on a scale of 1 to 10, it's about as close to a 10 as you can get. I really couldn't find anything to complain about. It's a very nice vehicle worth looking into in this price bracket. You can find the entire line of Genesis models at your local Hyundai dealer. Ooh, I don't think I was supposed to use the word Hyundai in this. Oh well. Too late now. Nice car.